Hey folks, Jeff and Lorena here at Back to Country, and today we're sharing one of our favorite uh, Mexican recipes uh, for barbacoa. And uh, barbacoa is a Mexican specialty. I love it. And it's uh, made from cheek meat, uh, cachete, cheeks, de res, or de beef, beef cheek meat. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut this meat up. We got ours at uh, Sam's Club if you're looking for it. And uh, we're going to cut it up, trim some of the fat off because we like to do that. Then we're going to throw it in the crock pot, uh, cook it overnight. And we're all we're going to do is add some fajita seasoning. This here is Fiesta brand, one of our favorites, fajita seasoning. It basically is just salt, pepper, onion, and garlic. And uh, it's really good. No, we're not sponsored by them, but uh, we do use that seasoning quite a bit. As you can tell, it's about empty. But uh, don't worry, I've got more. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, cutting this meat up and getting it ready to go in the crock pot. So barbacoa originated in the northern part of Mexico. And long, long time ago, uh, people used to dig a hole in the ground to make a pit. And they put uh, rocks inside and they got them really, really hot. And then they placed the, um, the head of the cow, that's what they used because they didn't want to waste any part of the cow before. And even now, so they wrap the head with um, banana leaves and maguey leaves. And maguey is uh, agave. So they wrap it up very well and they uh, cooked it for a long, long time, for hours, so it can get really tender. And so what we need to do here with the crock pot, we have to cook it for about... What would you say, Jeff? Well, Nine to eleven hours or so. Well, sometimes I cook it overnight, so yeah, probably anywhere from uh, nine to twelve hours. Uh, so that by the time we're eating it, I mean it just falls apart. It's really, really tender, and uh, all that flavor and everything has mixed. So even if there's like tough parts, you know, there can be tendons, muscle, uh, sinew, whatever is in the cheeks. You know, you can see here that there's some fat and there's like some uh, lining or whatever. Pretty much all of that just dissolves and becomes one uh, delicious, whatever you want to call it, delicious barbacoa. Barbacoa. <laughs> so, I mean, if you go to Mexico, you can still have, you know, chick meat or you can have the, the uh, beef head. Both of them are delicious. And actually, when I go to visit my family in Mexico, I discovered that Jeff does a pretty, pretty good job in doing this uh, delicious barbacoa. It's very comparable and sometimes better than, yeah, I'd, I'd than say some I'd, barbacoa in Mexico. I would say I'd do better than a pretty good job. I mean, <laughs> uh, I like to make stuff good and if i can make it even better than the original i will but uh i've been very happy and it, it took me some time to develop this i mean uh when i first started making it uh, i tried different things and uh you know i made a few batches that were okay but less than stellar they basically didn't meet my standard and so I just kept at it and kept trying different things. And really what it came down to is the, uh, number one, it has to be cheek meat. I've tried different kinds of meat to say, you know, if I throw in a brisket or uh, just a round or whatever, would it taste the same just with the spices and cook the same amount of time? And even uh, once I tried mixing it with cheek meat and nope. <laughs> There is no substitution. It absolutely has to be uh, the cheek meat. And 
you know you can see like here's a really good cut of just rich red meat and uh you know it's got some bands of uh i don't know if that's tendons or what it is but like i say all of that cooks down to basically just meat you can, you don't see any of that other stuff in there it's just pure deliciousness but uh, it, it it does give it a unique flavor uh, i have not been able to find any other cut of uh, beef that has the same flavor as this so i don't know why but uh man it is delicious and so okay. you absolutely have to use that cheek meat uh and then the other thing was just getting the seasons right i mean i looked at all different recipes online and everything and you know some people number one they don't know what barbacoa is and they try to call stuff barbacoa i mean they've called barbecue barbacoa uh one time i bought a package of something in the store that said it was barbacoa and basically it was a pot roast so uh nah don't be confused and and uh let the gringos that don't know nothing <laughs> i'm a gringo don't worry uh anyway all that people that don't have that true mexican experience tell you uh you know this is barbacoa or that's barbacoa if it ain't cheap meat or head meat it ain't barbacoa and uh there is definitely a significant difference in the flavor of the two uh or of the different cuts of meat so anyway uh once we figured out that it had to be the cheek meat and, and we started buying cheek meat uh then it was just a matter of figuring out the spices and man finally i uh just sprinkled some of this fajita season on at one time and boy it came out perfect and uh ever since then that is how i do it and uh i like to do this stuff is pretty often and then i basically will eat it for breakfast uh this is really good in tortillas uh tacos de barbacoa it's uh very delicious put it in a uh your choice i mean you can do corn or flour tortillas and uh put some fresh cilantro some people like to put some chopped up onion uh, with lime lime definitely gotta have some lime so uh, this is a very popular uh breakfast dish in mexico you uh yeah definitely gotta have your fixings anyway so we'll eat it for breakfast and then uh whatever's left i will typically put in little ziploc bags and freeze it and then i throw it in the freezer so that anytime i want some barbacoa i just break out a ziploc bag and defrost it real quick throw it in the microwave whatever and i got some tacos ready to go and uh it works great because in a little sandwich size ziploc bag that's enough for lorena and i and uh, i can throw that in the small freezer in the rv and pretty much when we're on the road out at the property whatever it makes for simple breakfast because it ain't too hard to heat up some tortillas and if the barbacoa is already made man it's just good Okay, we've got our meat all trimmed up and uh, in the crock pot. We're going to set that crock pot to high. And uh, I'm just going to generously put on some fajita seasoning because that's how I like it. There's no set amount. It's just whatever you feel like. And if you uh, get it done in the morning and it doesn't taste like it's got enough seasoning or whatever, you can always add more. It, uh, put a little salt on it when you eat it whatever it's pretty simple and that's really all we're gonna do we're gonna cover it and uh, through the magic of time this will cook all night long and tomorrow we'll be looking at pure deliciousness and here is the beautiful barbacoa looks delicious Oh, and to go with that wonderful barbacoa, there's nothing finer than fresh salsa. And that, my friends, is authentic Mexican barbacoa.
give it a try at home and let us know what you think. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.